We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. All right, hello and welcome to our Dutch GP predictions because thank God it is finally race week again. It has been the longest summer break of all time. Um, I know that I can speak for both Emily and myself in saying that we have been miserable, but it's race week. It is one day away from the weekend, thank God. Um, And we have some predictions for you along with some news and some stuff happening in the world of Formula One over the last couple days that we're really excited to dive into. We are, but before we dive in, Catherine, where are you podcasting from today? Running joke, we're never going to podcast from the same spot, so where are you at? Um, I am currently on my couch in my living room with my pink Power Ranger Build-A-Bear um, because the area behind my desk is a mess and I also needed to use that screen that was behind me last episode um, and, and have that blocking the washer and dryer so the cat doesn't get behind it. Solid. And what about you, Emily? (laughs) Um, Currently, I am sitting in bed. Um, One, it is 9.30 p.m. here, currently podcasting. Um, But also, this is the best lighting I can currently find in my apartment. So we might be a in-bed podcast going forward. So we'll see. But I'm in in my house in Argentina, in my bed, (laughs) podcasting. This could be the best gig ever, just work from bed constantly. Love it. (laughs) I mean, it... I'm self-employed, so working from pajamas is kind of my normal life. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, I do have a corporate job still, believe it or not, but, uh, yeah, I, I could definitely, could definitely do the podcast from bed, but, but yeah, so let's, you know, dive right in, uh, to our F1 news this week before we get into some of our predictions. So the first bit of news here is some non-news, We said that we would give you guys an update on Lewis Hamilton's contract, and there is no no update, no news there. Surprise, surprise. I texted Catherine earlier today. I was like, it's emotional. We understand. Like, they haven't been able to do it yet. Um, Just making a a little joke on the emotionally signed contract there. Um, But yeah, no news coming out of Mercedes camp on Lewis Hamilton's contract. I don't know when we're going to hear about it. I think September, hopefully. Um, But I don't know. We'll see. Um, Another really cool thing coming out this week, um, Alfa Romeo has a new livery. Um, So you will see a different um, design on the car for Alfa Romeo this week. So this is designed by a Swiss graffiti artist, um, Boogie. Am I saying that right? Boogie. Yeah, note note that it is it is boogie. And and for those of you who are are my personal friends who are listening to this podcast, it is boogie. B-O-O-G-I-E. And that is it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification, Catherine. Um, so this car is gonna be on display in the fan zone this weekend, and it's also gonna be sold at auction to raise money for Save the Children, um, which is super, super cool. Um, it's also a really you know, different fun design. Um, I personally like when the teams switch up their livery throughout the season. Um, I know McLaren switched theirs up to in one of the races to kind of show three different like car races that they've won throughout the years. Um, it was, you know, some thought it was a swing and a miss, but I think it's fun when they kind of change it up here and there. So, but yeah, yeah just kind of something. Something fun uh, coming out of the Alfa Romeo camp for this weekend. Yeah. So there's a spec car that was actually designed called the Art Car um, that they debuted in January. That's the car that's going to be on display and then auctioned off. And the um, drivers, Botas and Guan Yu, are going to be driving cars that are modeled off of this Art Car. Um, And and I've seen pictures already of um, their garages and the driver names at the top of each garage have been redone in the same style as this graffiti artist. So it's, it's pretty cool they're they're leaning into it um they, they've really knocked it out of the park with with all of their special liveries this season they've had some fun ones so far yeah no and I saw they posted like their um front wing and the front wing has already changed and it looks really cool so um I'm excited yeah. to see the them on the track 
Yeah, I agree. Um, so in, in more news, heading over to the Ferrari garage, um, we are going to have a different driver driving in FP1 uh, tomorrow. We're going to have Robert Schwartzman driving for Carlos Sainz as part of the young driver sessions. And so if, if you're kind of new into Formula One and you're like, why is, you know, why is Carlos not driving? This is normal. This is totally fine. Um, Don't panic. Is... It's not a Ferrari move to screw Carlos. <laughs> I mean, it kind of might screw him over anyway, but it's not intentional. Um, but um, this has been um, put together by Formula One to give drivers that are, you know, looking to get into F1 more experience in an F1 car. So every driver um, will have um, an FP1 session. Most of them will be happening toward the la in this latter half of the season where there will be a young driver from either their reserve reserve driver or from one of their young driver academies who will be um, driving instead of our current contracted drivers. Um, and so Robert, Robert Schwartzman, he is um, the Ferrari, um, what's it called? He, he, uh, he's their reserve driver this season. Um, this is his third FP1 appearance. Um, he had two appearances last, um, last season, um, one at Coda and one at Abu Dhabi. And then he will also be in the car for Leclerc in FP1 at Abu Dhabi in November. Um, so this is not the last we will be seeing of him. Um, but yeah, he was part of the um, Ferrari Young Driver Academy until last year when he graduated in to their reserve driver um, position. And um, this is the, the first of many that we will probably be seeing over the next few races. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is, like Catherine was saying, this isn't going to be the only team to do this. We'll see this amongst many of the teams this year um, in the second of half them. of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the next bit of news is um, Max Verstappen could be in a little bit of trouble with the law um, for speeding in an Aston Martin Valkyrie that ironically enough was designed by Adrian Newey um, and um, basically he got in trouble for going um, 120 kilometers an hour in a 90 kilometer um, per hour um, speed zone and when i i'm reading this i don't really know you know kilometers per hour and what that translates to just miles per hour um so when i finally got around to looking it up today i was like oh he was driving 70 miles an hour which is what i drive on the freeway and this is not to condone speeding i do not condone speeding um especially since he was doing this in a 55 mile an hour zone which is kind of bad definitely bad definitely bad um but i'm just it, it's like you would think that you know a driver driving you know a, a formula one driver motorsport speeding um you'd think he'd be going like something absurd like 90 miles an hour or something no he was driving what you know we like most sane people in Arizona drive on the freeway. And so I, I texted Emily that and I was like, I thought this was a big deal. And obviously it is a big deal because speeding is bad, but I also have a little bit of a lead foot and, you know, I tend to drive around 70 and so I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but I drive around 70 when the speed limit is like 65 miles an hour. Well, also the other thing is like when I first read it, I read it as 120 miles per hour but it was like, oh, wait, it's kilometers. And I was like, okay, not really that fast. And then I was like, 90 kilometers. So the first time I read it, I didn't translate kilometers. It was like 120 miles per hour to 90 kilometers. And I was like 55. So I was like 120 miles per hour in a 55. So I like because I'm still learning kilometers. So sometimes I translate, sometimes I don't. So it took me a minute to like fully translate it. But yeah, the thing is like someone was taking a video. Social media these days is, that's what kills you. But if no one like yeah. posted anything or took the video, like no one would even know. He's probably taken this car 240 kilometers in like a 90 kilometer per hour zone. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's an Aston Martin Valkyrie. It goes really fast. I don't know. It's it's just nothing's going to happen. I yeah, don't think it, anything's like, going to happen. Well, the also the thing is is that he wasn't caught in the act. Um like he wasn't pulled over while he was driving. So like obviously not condoning speeding. Um but I just 
you know, they, they said that the authorities are, are looking into, you know, giving him some sort of, of penalty. And we're, I, as I am not an expert in driving laws in, in what I'm assuming is France, because I'm pretty sure this was, you know, somewhere near his home in Monaco, um, I don't necessarily know legal-wise what they can do other than say, dude, seriously, you can do that on track, but please don't do that on our streets. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Uh, speaking of the streets, getting into our next little bit of news here, moving more towards Zanvoort, um, there is a group of about 150 taxi drivers um, from a town close to Zanvoort called Harlem. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, from the region of Harlem, who have been told that they are not going to be able to work the circuit or drive to the circuit. Um, because they're not going to be granted permits to pretty much bring people to the circuit. Allegedly, um, people have tried to obtain the special permits illegally in prior years um, from the municipality of Zanvoort. And so they have said, absolutely not, you're not allowed. Um, and so these drivers are going to protest on Saturday and Sunday and pretty much block the streets Um and not let people come to the circuit unless they reach an agreement with the municipality of Zandvoort before Friday. Um, it actually has gained more traction and more news than I thought it actually would. Like, I heard this story yeah. earlier in the week, and I was like, oh, that's funny. Like, what are you going to do about it? But it's actually gaining more and more news and, like, um, airtime than I thought it would. I don't know if anything's going to happen from it, but it's something to watch. It's something interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I mean, we know nothing you, about you it. There's been the no taxi drivers. No, I know I do know that. Yeah, there's been no agreement reached. Um as of right now, it's just a threat of a protest, but um yeah, there could be some some traffic on your way to Zanvoort if you're on your way there. <laughs> so, yeah. well, well, like the thing is, is they're they're expecting you know upwards of a hundred thousand people um, coming into Zanvoort, and this you know Zanvoort is a, a coastal kind of resort town in the Netherlands um, that's got a population of seventeen thousand, and it's not race weekend. So this is a huge opportunity for taxi drivers to make money. That this group of one hundred and fifty taxi drivers is going to be losing out on so obviously they're going to be really upset about this um and you know i i well also I them blocking the road like it's this. not it's not a huge town like it's not an it's not like you have a hundred access roads to get there it's it is a coastal um town like Catherine was saying and so it's not like you have a hundred ways of entry and it's a small yeah, it's, town it's kind too. Of, so it's it's like Kota in in Austin. There's one road in, one road out. Like there's you know, and and that's where where most of these these tracks are. Is they're they're not in the, a lot of them are not just not in the middle of places. Um, so this this could really make things hard for uh, fans um, who are commuting in and help even drivers potentially this, this could, this could make uh, some trouble for drivers and teams to, to get to the, to the circuit this weekend. Yeah. And Dutch fans are may, maybe not the m m most, um, pay I don't know. They're, they're an interesting fan dynamic. I would say they're very passionate. So yes. maybe not the most patient with, taxi drivers who are choosing to um protest and not allowing them to the race i think that's the most politically correct way i can describe that p potential situation <laughs> so yeah I yeah it, i think it's it, it, it'll, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how it plays out obviously we're recording this on wednesday this is going to be coming out on thursday so um potentially there could be a resolution between now and once we get into you know the the racing um portion of this weekend yeah and if there is a resolution we'll be sure to share it on our instagram because i'm actually kind of invested in this <laughs> like secretly um i am i too. i like kind of like a little bit of chaos when I'm not involved. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. And I think that like, unlike, you know, we've, we've had, you know, protests in the past, there's been climate change protesters, um, you know, almost every other year in Silverstone. Um, but at least this protest is not on the track where somebody is at risk of getting squished by a car driving 250 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, uh, there have been some dangerous ones in the past. So it's nice that this one is maybe not on the track. So. Yeah, as as I say to to the the kids that I, I lead on the the summer hikes that we go on, cars are heavy and they'll hurt if they hit you. It like sounds so common sense like, but I still jaywalk and run across the street. So, yeah, and yeah. I just have uh, you know the, I'm I'm hiking with a bunch of fifteen year olds who have no sense. I, I love I these to, children. Don't get me wrong. I need I love to remember. Them. I need to remember, like you, you saying that in the back of my mind when I'm like, I'm sure I can run across the street and not get hit by this bus. Uh, and honestly, Buses like are here also in heavy. they're really heavy. And here in Argentina too, they're way crazy. Winston like runs away from them. They're so crazy. But everyone here, I like walk across the street like I'm in the U.S. And people here look at me like I'm a crazy person because they're like no these cars will hit you I'm like they can't hit me it's fine and they're like no they will hit you I'm learning slowly they will hit you because they can so please don't hit by get hit by a car I don't want to lose my (laughs) co-host noted uh okay on that note I think we can move into our weekend predictions yes let's do that Um, okay I'm excited about these I'm very excited about these personally I I personally had like a hard like a harder time than I think I normally would have mostly because we haven't seen anyone drive in um you know almost a month over a month um so I I had a little bit of trouble coming up with like ideas and I think that you know hopefully once we get into like the week in week out of the second half of the season it will be easier for me because I don't want to spend 20 minutes on this because I have other things to do (laughs) you know I was just sitting here thinking to myself, and I was like, you know what? It could either go one of two ways. So that's what my my predictions really, really show. So, okay, yeah, Catherine, biggest biggest surprise for you? Um, for the I weekend. think that the the biggest surprise of the weekend is going to be that we will see both Alphatari drivers, both Yuki and Daniel, in the points this weekend. I just I, I have that feeling. I love this. I love this. For you, for me, for everyone in the world, for F1, I love this. And I think I think it's going to happen. I don't know if you saw this, but Danny posted that like he didn't get a full, true holiday break because he was just training. He had a lot to catch up on. Like, he's so locked in. I think, I think you're calling this. I think they'll both be in the points. For yeah, sure. I, I just, I really want to see that. I really, we, we posted um, on the Instagram today, or if you're watching this yesterday, Wednesday, um, our, you know, one of the things that's really not talked about in the, the 2024 driver questions is AlphaTauri. Um, and I think that AlphaTauri, A, would be crazy to get rid of Yuki at this point because he's such a solid driver for them. And, and then I think that, you know, with these rumors that AlphaTauri is going to be getting the RB19 next year, that that's going to keep Daniel in the car for the 2024 season so he can compete with Checo for the Red Bull seat in 2025. Um, and I think that this is just going to be like the beginning of that journey and that process that Danny is going on to get back into that Red Bull seat. Yeah, no, I do. And I think this is going to be a great, great first weekend. Yeah, back. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. Because I feel like this is truly like his first weekend. Like I know he had races but but like this is to me this is his first race like this that's how I'm seeing it for him like summer break this is his first one so yeah and then Emily what is what is your prediction for biggest surprise (laughs) well we're saying biggest surprise so I have a Ferrari double podium (laughs) because I feel like the Ferrari car like for the Ferrari team I feel like Zandvoort it it suits their team I think personally Um, so I think a big surprise, a big, the, the biggest surprise besides like a Ferrari or besides a, um, Red Bull double DNF, I think would be a Ferrari double podium. Um, I don't know. I think maybe some time off everyone's, you know, getting their ducks in a row. I think maybe they can pull it out. 
Which yeah, well, kind I mean, of like Charles was on the podium last year, so it's not that out of the you know out of, out of that to to think that he would be back. No, it's not. It's really going to depend on honestly what Checo does in Quali, because honestly, if he if he doesn't make it through to Q three, and he ends up in Q two again, then he's going to have a lot of you know places to make up. So. If he doesn't do well in quali and Carlos does well in quali, then I think if Ferrari just like lets him drive, I think it'll be okay. And I think they could potentially do it. I don't know. But that kind of goes into who's going to, you know, do a dum-dum. I also have on the flip side Ferrari doing a double DNF because I truly feel like in this race, it's going to go one way or the other because they either had enough time off where they're going to double podium or they had too much time off to where no one remembers how to do their job. Yeah, well, I, I also, um, and I, I I just, I, I words, Catherine, whoa. Um, I also think that um, the who's going to do a dum-dum is going to be Ferrari. I specifically think that this is going to impact Carlos. Um, I think, you know, I don't get me wrong. I love the young driver sessions. Obviously, that's what got Logan Sargent into an F1 car after last season um, and got him the super license points he needed to take the, to, to be able to have a contract with Williams. But I think that, you know, with how Ferrari is strategy wise, I just think that inevitably, you know, Carlos losing out on that session um, is going to, you know, it's, it's going to really impact him. And then, you know, Ferrari is probably going to do something strategy wise. That's going to be dumb. Um, and Carlos will um, have exactly, not exactly what happened um, last time that they were at Zandvoort, but, and cause I don't, I hope that he won't get another penalty. Um, but I feel like this is going to impact him a little negatively and it is you know it, it's not gonna be a great weekend for Carlos which is not what I want but I think is inevitable yeah and now that I'm you know thinking about this we need to maybe reconsider this point of like who's gonna do a dumb dumb to like what's Ferrari going to do that's dumb because probably every week it's gonna be us picking something that Ferrari does and I say that as a loving Ferrari fan um but and I don't mean to hate on them. We just, they're just, you know, it's hard. They're an easy target. They're doing it to themselves, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean who, who knows? Maybe next week we'll get the vibes that it's going to be Lance Stroll doing it um, or, you know, Pierre Maybe Gasly. we're going to get the we vibes where, like, everything is magically fixed. And, like, you know, the source just gotten everyone in line and we're just, like, going to kill the rest of the season. And, like, you know, we're back, baby. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Pole position prediction. Who do we think? I literally wrote, does it even matter? Because <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Doesn't matter who gets pole. Max is going to win anyways. But um, I have Max. Same. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, you know, that not, not only is this going to be his attempt at the gazillionth win in a row and he's going up um, for one of Seb Vettel's records, um, but it's his home race. And I feel like last year they, like, I don't, like, I think that he could have not won the race last year at Zandvoort, if it hadn't been his home race, I just feel like there was enough that was going against him that it really took everything in him to win this race. But I think in, in this case, it's his home race. Um, he is, you know, you know, it's Max, is, you know, unless, unless something really dumb happens, um, it's going to be a Max Paul and a Max win. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I hate to say it, but like, it is. Like, it, it just is. I mean, watching him get so upset for, like, not getting higher in Q2 in, um, what was it, Hungary, maybe? Spa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember which one, but he was so, like, just seeing how frustrated he, like, he wants to be in first every time. Doesn't matter how, it, like, where it is in the grand scheme of things like he wants to be number one always forever so he won't not be pole at his home race no yeah. not a chance yeah yeah exactly it's, so it's, it's it's max yeah 
It's Max. So, with him being pole, and we've already kind of said he's going to win, who rounds out your your podium then, Catherine? Unless unless uh, you're not going to have Max be first, but I think I think we're leaning that way. Uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely have, have Max as, as my P1. Um, I have Perez P2. I think that he doesn't have a choice. He has to, um, you know, have, have taken this this time to get his head back on straight. And, you know, I, I think I've talked about this before, that, like, Checo notoriously has these periods, or at least he has since he's been at Red Bull, where he will, you know, be really, really good, king of the streets, blah, blah, blah. And then he'll have, like, a, a line of like you know 14 you know four four poop emojis in a row where he finishes in like the top five but obviously that's just not enough for Red Bull um you have you know they Red Bull is looking for you know double podiums top two or one three um so I think that you know there's a lot riding on Checo's contract um especially if we don't want to see um which I know that you 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 could care less about is if we don't want to see a late in the game um contract trade and that we see you know Danny in the car in 24 um which Emily thinks could still be a possibility even though it has been debunked by basically every major player at Red Bull which I I don't necessarily disagree with Emily I think that it can totally Totally happened too. Also, okay, I'm gonna pause you really quick before you go to third place. I have a hot take on the Checo, like he's behind Max so many points, his contract can be restructured. Oh, I, no, that's bullshit. No, I understand, but it created a lot of noise, and that has to like be a lot of pressure and like annoying to Checo. I would not put it past someone at Red Bull. To just like leak that just to like have motivation for Checo and for them to be like, oh, no, 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 Checo. Like we would never do that. But like you do need to step it up. Wink. You know what I mean? Like horrible, horrible motivation tactic. But like I wouldn't put it past someone to use that as a motivation tactic. Yeah, I just I... Because who don't else really would anything. know the contract that well besides someone at Red Bull? You know what I mean? Well, like, like, they would have to leak it and, and say, like, oh, you know, this isn't his contract. Like, they could potentially restructure it. So it would have to come from Red Bull. Yeah, but I mean, we. so one of the points is that we don't know – you know, most of the, the intricacies of driver contracts, the most that we really do know that is, you know, solid and confirmed is when these end dates of these contracts are, unless you're Lance Stroll, but that's an entirely different story. Um, but I just, I, I do not think that there is this provision in his claw, in his contract that says that if Max is 8,000 points ahead of him, that they're, that, that he's going to take a pay cut. There's no way in hell he's signing a contract like that, even if it is to drive at Red Bull. I just don't see that being a thing. Well, but also, like, you have to remember, these are, like, very, very top-tier athletes, and they have pride, so it's like, oh, that would never even be the case, so, like, you know, why not sign on the dotted line? I don't know. I don't know. This is pure speculation, but I just... I just think it's interesting how that all came out. But anyways, yeah, continue, oh, with your, continue with your third place. Oh, yeah. And my, my third place is Lando Norris at McLaren. I think that McLaren is going to pick up right where they left off um, before the summer break. And we are going to see another um, podium. Nice, nice, nice. And then what about you? Unfortunately, I have Max in first. Um, yeah, home race, like, the kid is, I mean, you know, he's going to win again. At this point, I'm kind of rooting for him to win the remainder of the races. I would like to see him break records at this point. Like, if you're going to do it, just, like, break all the records. Like, win at Singapore. Um, you know what I mean? Like, just do it. Just take it. This whole season will be a wash. You'll win every rec, you know, break every record and we can all start again in 2024. Yeah. That's what and I'm then he'll do about. it all over again. Maybe not. Maybe we can have <laughs> some more people be competitive next year. We'll see. But so I have Max winning. I have Lewis in second, which the, I know he's not even going to make the podium, but I feel like, I don't know. I, I had a, I have a feeling that he's going to come back from the summer break and just be ready to go. Don't know why, but I do. Um, and then I have 
just also because I just cannot stand Checo. And I just, I can't, I can't put him there. I don't know why. I just can't. I don't, mm, I just can't do it. So mostly it's because of that. And then I have Oscar Piastri in third. I really like what I've seen out of Oscar lately. I think he's been doing really, really well. I think personally, I think he has been out driving Lando. I think McLaren um, brought really, really good upgrades before the break. And I I personally think he's driving better than Lando. I think he's just been getting some unfortunate breaks in the race. Um, but I think he's I think he's feeling more comfortable with the car than Lando. So I think um, I think he might get a podium this year or this week. I'd like to see him get another podium that's not in a sprint race, but um, Agreed. I I really think that he's a really good young driver. So I think uh, this week might be it for him. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. I would I would love to see him, especially after, you know, what happened in Spa at the race did really kind of suck and he was just so disappointed. So I would I'll, I would I also know. love to see um, you know, him on the podium. I think that, you know, not entirely the same as the situation at Ferrari between Charles and Carlos, but I do think that, you know, um McLaren does favor Lando a little bit over Oscar, which, you know, could be right Naturally, so. Yeah. Um so I think that, you know, it's, you know, that, that could be a little bit of it, but, you know, I would be happy to see either McLaren driver on the, you know, on the, on the podium. And I would also love to see, you know, a, um, you know, an, an Aston, a, one of the Aston Martin drivers on the podium too. I didn't include that, but I would love to see that as well. So we'll see. Well, and that's a hard thing too. Like, yeah, I want to see Fernando win another race, but I mean, when you have Max in the, you know, RB19, like, no one's going to win a race besides him, maybe Checo. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see Fernando at least get another podium. But I don't know. And I know Aston's bringing up – I think they're bringing upgrades to Zanvoort. Yes. yes. Yes, they're bringing upgrades to Zanvoort. And so we'll see where that shakes out. I mean, we I haven't heard a lot from that camp on what these upgrades, you know, where where they're shaking out. So that's kind of why I haven't I don't have Fernando on there. But again, I'd love to see him up there. Um mm-hmm. I love Fernando. He's just ugh. He's Netflix so gold also. Um Top but tier. have you watched his his like single solo show by chance? No. I had I'm, oh my God. I need to. So it's all in Spanish, but it's really, really good. I it's know on, a rudimentary amount of Spanish. <laughs> you probably know more Spanish than I do, and I live in Argentina. But it's on, like, Amazon Prime. But it's really, really good. Highly suggest it. It shows, like, his IndyCar, um, sir, like, when he retires from F1 and goes into, like, his other things. Sorry to go off track. But um, highly uh, recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so back on track. Um, my personal favorite prediction and I think the hardest one, what do you, who do you think is going to land in P10? So P10 is the very last place to earn points. You earn one point. Who do you think is going to land there this weekend? Yeah, well, since I predicted a um, AlphaTauri double podium, I think that the person who has gotten the closest to that um, is, uh, or to, to that, you know, 10 spot is going to be Yuki. Um, and I think that, you know, Daniel will be ahead of him, but I do think that Yuki is going to be P10. Yuki's such a solid P10 person. He's like always like 9, 10, 11, like right there, always, like constantly. Sorry if that came through. That was my cat's feeder. It's dinner time. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, the chef is a little hungry. <laughs> somebody somebody needs to eat. Um, yeah, so I, I think that it's it's going to be Yuki. What about you? What do you think that um, your – what is your P10 prediction? So I picked um, Kevin Magnuson. So I will say this is slightly influenced because I'm currently listening to um, – Gunther's book, but also because I feel like we've just been waiting for Haas to, like, do something. Like, they keep making it into Q3 and qualifying. I feel like they do have a strong car, and then, like, just something happens. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like after the break, maybe we'll get there. I am I hope that they'll do better and get, like, P7, P8, but I just feel like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 
K Mags will be P10. I don't know. And he's such a good driver. And I feel like the car this year is, is, you know, they continued on their car from last year. I don't know. I just, I think it was mostly influenced from, from listening to Gunther's book. But um, yeah, I'm going K Mags. Yeah, I think that it's, you know, I, you know, reading, reading the book and just being like, oh my God. And, and also living through last season, it's like, oh my God, they like, they, they're so great. They do so great on Saturday. They're a really solid Saturday team. And then you get to Sunday where it actually matters. And it's like, Kevin gets a meatball flag. Someone gets a penalty. There's an ill-time safety car. Retire. And it's just like, come on. Like, and it's like someone wanted to pit for tires. And then we shouldn't have. And it's like. Yeah. yeah it just, it's like this. This is not like. The, it, <laughs> yeah. They're it's a much better bad. team than. It reflects exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really that's really what it is. And it's just it's like it's like please guys, please do something good for us. We we like as as an American, and this is an American team. I really want to see good things for Haas. I really do. Yeah. Um, and then you well, know, we forget weekend, like we they're very very young. Haas is really really young. Like they started in 2016, so they're only seven. This is only their seventh season, so. Yeah. And like, yeah, they had a great first, you know, first couple of seasons. They, they, they had a really solid start and then kind of just, you know, took a, took a little tumble into a little pit. And then this little, uh, panini happened from 2020 that kind of set them back a little bit. And then they experimented with having a double rookies in their seats. And we all know how well that went. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they are in comparison, a very young team. Um, but as you know, from the fact that we started our podcast, um, month early we're just really impatient for the things that we want and one of the things that we're impatient for is seeing a little bit more success at a Haas yeah exactly do you have any other predictions for this weekend like any like fun cool things or yeah well I kind of already mentioned that I think that you know Aston Martin's upgrades will kind of undo what the last set of upgrades did because you know Aston Martin did was doing really well then they brought some upgrades that the didn't work um, and it took them a couple steps back so I think that these upgrades will you know undo the errors of their ways and, and bring They're them back up to where we ex- <laughs> yeah exactly their downgrades so I think that this this will bring them back up in the field and my other um, prediction and I think it's funny because I've seen like memes about like if you're a good fan you're not bringing smoke bombs to Zanfort um, but I think that at least one idiot Verstappen fan will set off an orange smoke bomb prior to the race or just at the beginning of the race and it's gonna make it impossible for us to see on the broadcast and it's just gonna be really stupid and everyone's like oh no look at these fans who are disrupting things for everyone and blah 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 and you can't see with the smoke like I can already hear Crofty and Martin talking about it already um and I think that there's gonna be some idiot who's gonna do the thing and it's gonna be dumb um and it's like yeah we know you're all wearing orange like we know who you're supporting we don't need the smoke McLaren right yeah exactly it's McLaren I love when Lando's like there's so many papayas here this weekend supporting McLaren it's my it's that's like my favorite my favorite comment I think ever from this race is um McLaren is orange the Dutch wear orange for those of you who are newer to F1 but Lando Norris uh commented once like oh my gosh there's so many papayas so many mclaren supporters here that's so kind of them um but they were really just wearing orange for max because he's dutch and it's in zanbort which is in the netherlands which are the dutch long-winded uh talking about the joke it's not as funny when you have to explain it but (laughs) that's okay no it's still funny it's it's still funny it actually is still funny no I'm honestly, I'm just excited to see Martin again. My man, Martin. Yeah, I'm excited to watch a grid walk. I haven't seen a grid walk all summer because I have not been able to wake up, you know, any earlier than lights out because I've been, you know, running a summer camp the last two and a half months. So it'll be really nice to see, you know the the grid walk and all of the chaos that we're going to get from a Zanbort grid walk and and what that's going to be like. I know, I'm so excited. It's gonna be so I can't fun. wait. But yeah, so you guys, um, we 
will be recapping the Dutch GP for you guys on Monday. So we'll have an episode coming out on Monday with our recap of the Grand Prix. And also make sure that you follow us all weekend long, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on our Instagram, going.off.track where we will be, you know, doing coverage of all of the free practices, quali, and the race. Um, But as of right now, that's it for the podcast, and thanks for going off track.